Uh, the, the, the thing is, even though I know what most of this is already going to be because I'm psychic, uh, I'm not psychic at all, it's just they generally all wind up being about the same. Uh, but the rules, um, if there are any rules, uh, if you can if you want, that's fine. You loan me pens, you can do whatever. Um, but you can ask me anything. Uh, you can ask me about personal life, things, because I'm, I, I, sometimes I like to talk about things that aren't anime, because uh, even though I spend a lot of my day um, with and around and watching and listening to anime, uh, I like to get away sometimes. So, um, it, it doesn't have to be limited to anime, is, is the whole point of this panel. If we can learn things about each other. See each other as human beings. <laughs> uh, so, with that being said, uh, if anyone has any questions, you may ask them. Back here. What's your favorite food? <laughs> my favorite food? Uh, well, most of my life it has been fried okra. I know that's bizarre. Fried <laughs> okra. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and still call it my favorite food. I don't eat it anymore. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to watch my girlish figure, so uh, okra's out. Anything fried is out, but fried okra, I've always liked. Yes? What was your favorite character that you voiced? Uh, favorite character that I voiced? There, I hate to give you the standard answer of all actors, but I'm going to because it's true. Um, you like all of them. You, you, there are some you might you know, have a fonder memory of than others. For me, that would be um, Claire Stanfield from Bacchano. If oh, you've ever yes. seen. Uh, I, I absolutely loved playing that character. Uh, but then there's Kiyosoma, because I, I, could, I could have done that one role and gone to conventions for the rest of my life. <laughs> That's that true. Role. So, I mean, I owe a lot to that role. Um, Jimmy Kudo was another one that the popularity of the show uh, gave me at least, what, five seasons, five or six seasons, uh, which was great. It's for, for someone in the voice acting realm, uh, six seasons is pretty good. It's a pretty good run. Most of the time you get one or two tops, so uh, that was nice. Uh, and I like the character on top of that. Um, Happiness Bunny. Uh, I like that one just because it was fun. Uh, you, you like them all for different reasons, but you like them all uh, because you can't tear it away from, hey, I got the chance to do this thing I really like to do. Uh, so even if they gave me a character that perhaps I, I wasn't interested in at first or I didn't like, I'm still going to like it because I get to work. You know, and and I enjoy the process of, of voice acting, uh, or just I should just say acting. We should drop the voice from it. It's acting. Uh, so you love them all, like your kids, except for the bratty. You know what I mean. Yes, ma'am. What we love to do is you're so delicious. <laughs> oh Lord. Would you prefer he's referring to pork cutlet bowl? <laughs> Or do, or do you mean delicious when he's talking about you and his lips? Because <laughs> I don't know what it's for me. Oh, here. What do you think is the hardest part about voice acting? Hardest part about voice acting uh, is getting people to realize that it's just acting. Um, no, uh, I'm kidding. It's, uh, I don't know. Probably, probably just any time you have to scream or do anything that's uncomfortable with your voice, because you don't want to ruin it. Otherwise, you won't get to do it anymore. Um, but for me, I think that's what I'm going to say: is anything that's just really demanding on on the voice itself. Otherwise, I it's just fun. It's so much fun that I don't, you know, I'm willing to, to burn out my throat every now and then if it's for doing something that's 
really fun that I enjoy doing and if it will make the performance better. Um, but I think that's probably the hardest thing for me. I'm sure others would give you a different answer, but for me that's it. Yes, sir. What is your professional pet peeve? Oh my goodness. <laughs> professional pet peeves. Um, for those of you that, that don't know, I'm also an ADR director for Funimation. Uh, so not only do I occasionally get to do voices still, uh, I, I direct the other actors. Um, I, I know what production is like, so I understand actors and how most of them work, but I, I absolutely, it gets under my skin that people don't show up on time. Uh, now, you're, you're going to be hard pressed to find actors that do show up on time. I don't know why it's so closely related to the actor field that you have to be late, uh, but for so it seems to be, oftentimes. Uh, or maybe they took a little bit longer in another booth or something like that, but there's this thing in my mind that says, look, you have one of the most fun jobs you could possibly ask for, you get paid pretty darn well for it, and you can't show up on time. Uh, but in production, it ultimately falls down to, did you get it finished? So even if they're late, as long as we get everything finished, I can't really complain. I can't gripe at them too much. Uh, I will probably joke with them about it and go, no, I understand, not important enough for you to show up on time. I get it. Um, that's probably one of the biggest ones is I, and that's because I had normal jobs before Funimation. I had jobs in the real world where people expect you to show up on time. Actually, they expect you to show up early mm -hmm. and be ready for your job when it starts. Um, and I've carried that with me to every job I've been at. Uh, so you win some, you lose some, <laughs> I suppose. Uh, over here. What's the weirdest fan gift you've gotten? Oh my goodness, nobody's taping, are they? <laughs> no, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. I don't want this out there. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings that, that might see it. Because it wasn't meant as weird, I'm sure. Uh, not too long ago, I forget where we were, um, but there was a very nice young lady that had gone to the trouble of making these clay dolls of, I don't know how many of my characters, it was a lot, though. Oh, it was, a, it was the whole, it was a couple of the teams from the dark tournament of, uh, of Yu Yu Hakusho, is what it was. That's what it was. And they, some of them were actually pretty good, and, and she had them all jointed, and they were stuck together with these wires and whatnot. Well, something happened in the transportation of these characters before she gave them to me, uh, that they were all in pieces. So their individual pieces were just, and they had these wires sticking out of them. So she hands me this like Ziploc bag that weighed about 10, 15 pounds oh. with, with metal sticking out of it. <laughs> oh. It's just like, I made all these. It's this from you, Hakusho. And it's like, all you can do is go, oh, okay, <laughs> cool. Uh, but we, we did actually take them back to the room and reassemble them as best we could and took a picture of them uh, because I was not going to carry a 10 pound bag of clay and wires sticking out of it all the way home. So at least we did take a picture of it. That's pretty weird. Uh, yes, sir. What's your favorite piece of music to listen to just to relax and check out of the world? That is a great question. Uh, I'm not sure I have any <laughs> single one. Uh, I, I, I am a, a long time musician as well uh, so sometimes I just take time and practice things that I've written over the years because if I don't I'll forget how to play them uh, but I've, I've always been a big Queen fan love Queen I've always liked Queen um, anything that's good I'm you know I that's one of the great things about a lot of the the younger group that has come in to work at Funimation sometimes as engineers and because uh, I don't think millennials are all bad uh, <laughs> but I've been introduced to a lot of music that I otherwise wouldn't have heard uh, were it not for somebody going hey have you heard of this group they're really cool 
And I'm like, oh, are they? Well, let's hear it. And then I listen and I go, hey, you're right, they're pretty cool. Um, I'm always looking for good music, really. I have no, there's nothing I won't listen to. Uh, there's, a, there's a Willie Nelson quote that, that he uses a lot, which is there are two kinds of music, good and bad. And it's just a matter of I like to listen to good music. And the bad stuff, I just want to know. 86, the bad stuff. Yes? How do you usually get into character? Um, for me, I can only speak for myself. There's, there's really not a lot of what you would classically think of as getting into character. Um, it's more of a trying to find certain things that reflect personality. Uh, which usually the director will give you if you don't already pick up on it on your own. Um, but I look for a lot of a lot of cues, not only you know listening to the Japanese and, and trying to play off of that and stay as accurate as I can to their intention. Uh, but there's also the facial expressions they're making, what their eyes are doing, how their body is, if they're moving at the time. Uh, I usually pay more attention to those things um, and just try to stay within the realm of the, the character that the director has given me. So if they're like, this guy's kind of brash, I'm like, okay, I'll keep that in mind. Just be brash about it, everything. Um, or this guy's quiet, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to be the quiet guy. Um, it could go so many different ways. It's, it's just a matter of following the lead of the director and playing off the Japanese. Without the Japanese, I would be nothing. <laughs> so glad that they have this thing called anime. Yes? What's your favorite hobby? Uh, favorite hobby, playing music. That's an easy one. I have to call it a hobby because I make no money at it. <laughs> I know, I should. I should totally make money at it. Uh, yes? Uh, what's your strategy with balancing your personal life? While also directing, all that Strategy of balancing my personal life with uh, acting and directing. Uh, my strategy is evidently to fail miserably at it. <laughs> uh, because the faster, I'll, I'll just be honest about that, the faster we go at Funimation, which it just kind of, it seems to be picking up speed and picking up speed and picking up speed. It takes up a lot more of your time outside of Funimation as well. Uh, so it, it can be difficult. It can be difficult. Um, Monday through Friday, my day is based around Funimation. That's just it's what I do. So I kind of, I don't have a lot of choice. <laughs> uh, but again, there are way worse jobs out there. So. Uh, I can't complain too much. It is, it is by far the best job I've ever had. Uh, so even if it takes these days 50 to 60 hours a week to do all the stuff, then at least I'm not out in the warehouse somewhere lifting lots of heavy stuff. Because I've done that, and it's not that enjoyable. And it doesn't pay as well. Which is crazy to me, but that's how it works. Uh, yes, sir? Uh, just a Quick two part question. Um, when it comes to like the voice uh, voice acting recordings, uh, is every scene filmed with everybody there or just certain people? One at a time. One at a time. It is one person at a time. Okay. Uh, so what you wind up with is the first person to go in, whoever that may be, is recording essentially in a vacuum. They have no one to respond to, uh, there's no one to even listen to. Uh, they're playing off of whatever the director tells them and the Japanese, kind of like I was saying before. Um, and then as it builds, it gets a little bit easier for each next actor. Uh, because by the time we get the last voice in whatever episode, they've got everyone to play off of. Okay. So a lot of times that will go a little bit faster because you can just kind of let it roll. Uh, it's because at that point it becomes more responsive than anything else. Um, it's just making sure you build up everything around that so that they do have an easy time doing it. Um, but I tend, to, I tend to, most of the time, I pick fairly well-seasoned cast members, so there's not a lot of explaining. They all know what they're there to do. They're all very good at their jobs. Um, it's 
not too difficult for those that have been doing it for years. Um, back there. Yes. Um, how do you feel like your directing influences your acting and vice versa? Um, that's a good question as well. Before I became a director, uh, I was so into the acting. You know, I would go in and I was all serious and I've got my game face on and I'm watching the screen and I'm just ready to do my acting thing, right? Uh, and since I've become a director uh, and really just out of necessity for time, you learn that a lot of that's not really necessary. Uh, as great as it is, and you want people to be in into their character, uh, there's just not a lot of time to do the whole, okay, well, let's talk for 20 minutes about who this guy is. You don't have time for that at all. Um, so it's kind of a, okay, this guy is this, he's this way, he has these traits, I'm thinking mid-range in your voice, and let's check out this line. You check it out, okay, all right, let's record it. Uh, and then I go, all right, great. Or I go, uh, we need to slow down the first part, stretch out the second part just a little bit, and I'd like you to emphasize this word instead of that word. Maybe something like that. Um, but the, uh, the directing, I've also had the opportunity a couple of times, not that I had planned it, but it's the way it worked out, of directing myself in the booth. Uh, and it's weird. It's, it's very weird. You're so used to, to judging other people that when it's your turn, uh, you become a lot more conscious of the mistakes you're making. So you get a little flustered, at least I get a little flustered, because I go, oh man, I thought for sure I would have said it better than that. But I didn't. I guess I gotta do it again. Well, that's embarrassing coming from the director. Uh, but you, you do what you do to get it done. Um, luckily, I've been doing it for... 16 years, 16 going on 17 years now. So usually within two or three takes, I've got it. It's it's not so bad, but it is it's weird going from one to the other. You're like, how do I judge this? I don't know. Um, yes. What's the hardest, most difficult role that you've ever done? Most difficult role? Uh, I think just because of the voice aspect of it, probably Barry the Chopper. <laughs> um, because he had to scream a lot. And I, I, think, I think on that one I lost my voice once uh, after the session, um, which wouldn't have been bad, except I had to play uh, somewhere that night with the band that I played with, and it was, uh, it was not pleasant. But everything worked out. I'm fine. Everything is fine. Uh, but probably bury the chopper. Um, back there. Yes. Um, my favorite scene from Ariana. I'm. I'm. This is gonna probably hurt some of your hearts and brains. Um, I haven't seen the whole show. <laughs> uh, the, I've, I've seen, I think I've seen the entire first episode, which Victor is barely in. Um, but, and I've seen every scene that Victor is in. But all the stuff surrounding that, I have no idea. Uh, so, now, I'm going to have to watch it. Uh, matter of fact, I think sometime during this week, uh, or by, or next weekend, I suppose I could still do that. Because the weekend after that, I'm going to be at a convention with the creator <laughs> of Year Me On Ice, and I think it'd be a good idea if I had at least seen the show. <laughs> um, but in all fairness, please let me explain. Uh, the reason it is that way is, uh, how many of you know about the broadcast dubs that Funimation, so you've heard about those? Uh, we have at least, what, nine, nine daytime directors all doing one broadcast dub, which is usually an episode per week, and working on a DVD dub at the same time. So you get basically 20 or 20 something hours of simul dub, and then the rest of it is the DVD dub. 
that's for now anyway, that's how things work. So everybody's got that going on. At the same time, uh, I was in uh, Psyche K was going on. Uh, there was some other show I was in, and then I was booked for Victor. So it was a matter of I would spend my hours during the day recording these other shows, and then I had to split going between uh, one studio for Psyche K and then going to another studio to do Victor. So there, there wasn't exactly a lot of time to watch everything. Uh, and then after that, I'm still continuing with my normal schedule. Uh, I occasionally still record in other people's shows, so it's a matter of just finding the time to do it, you know? But I'll get there. I've got two weeks. I'll make it. I'll, I'll see it by then. Over here. Do you ever like hang out with other voice actors outside of like conventions or like work and like do you have any funny stories involved? Um, we we you know it's it's one of those things where we hang out when we can. Plus there's the the added issue of I live in Fort Worth. Uh, most everybody else lives in Dallas. Uh, I didn't do that on purpose, but it just worked <laughs> out that way. Uh, the I guess probably the one I, I hung out with the most was uh, J. Michael Tatum. We used to go over to his house and have dinner and have drinks and just kind of hang out and watch stupid television shows and things like that. Uh, ghost Hunters, we would, we would watch Ghost Hunters <laughs> because we thought it was ridiculous and yeah. stupid. So we enjoyed it because it's funny. Yeah. Uh, we also have a lot of the same taste in like older stupid movies that we remember from when we were kids and things like that. Um, plus, I think he's attracted to me, if we're just being honest. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I can sort of. Um, but no, we, we, we're friends and we like each other, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, we hang out, you know, whenever there's a, an event or sometimes there have been times when, you know, Jamie and Monica used to live together, they would throw parties at their place for whatever occasion and invite a lot of people. Um, Sabbath used to have uh, New Year's Eve parties that he would invite a whole bunch of actors over to his house and we would all sit around and watch who could outdo with everyone else and I guess talking about themselves because that's what actors usually do. Uh, you know, we hang out when we can. Most of us like each other, but you have to remember they're actors. So a lot of times it's really hard to tell where they stand on anything. It's it's kind of like it's kind of like when an actor goes, I love you. you. There's always that little part of you that goes, but do you? <laughs> I don't know. So there's a little bit of truth to those advertisements on television that you see when they go, this is not this is not an actor. It's a real person, and you go, but I thought actors were real people. <laughs> it's hit and miss. It really depends on the actor. Yes. Jazz a day? Jazzy day. Jazz, okay. Even better. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so one of my questions for you is, who do you think would win in a game of Connect Four between you and Lisa Ortiz? Ooh. I I would hate to to she seems pretty smart. <laughs> so Hilarious. I don't want to underestimate her. Oh. Uh, she seems pretty smart, but but my Connect Four game's pretty good too. Oh, yeah. It is. No, no, no. <laughs> so just so you know, but uh, yeah, she's 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 a pretty smart lady. So I I don't I would hate to judge before I played her, and really I'd rather not play her. <laughs> then I run the risk of looking like an idiot. And, but I run the risk of looking like an idiot. All the time. Question. I guess it's kind of something to break the ice. Like, sure. Um, how does it feel uh, knowing that you are a person who provides a voice that a lot of young adults and young people look up to? It's bizarre. Okay. It's it's really bizarre. I I uh, for the longest time uh, I 
I had done voices a while before I ever went to a convention or knew that conventions existed. Uh, so the first conventions I ever went to, I was just blown away that there was even a convention. That people, I was like, wait a second. So, so some people will come to see somebody that dubs anime? And I go, oh yeah, the kids really love it. And I'm like, but, but all I'm doing is dubbing anime. You, you get that, right? I'm just, I'm dubbing. I'm taking what's already there. And I am trying to be true to it as much as I can. Uh, but I'm the English language option on a DVD. Uh, and and I, I don't want to underplay it because I know some people only watch dubs. Some people never see the subs and they don't know what the, the original Japanese was like. Um, but that was lost on me for the longest time. I was just like, why would anyone show up to listen to a person who dubs anime talk about anything. Oh, because they like it, or you're the only one they've seen. Oh, okay, I guess I could take that. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's weird, because I would do it without any of this. Right. Uh, when I started, I, I did it because I wanted to, and it was fun, and I still feel the same way about it after 16, 17 years. Right. It's, it's just something I really enjoy doing, and not everybody gets the chance to do it, obviously, so I will keep at it as long as I possibly can. And I'm holding up pretty well. I mean, I don't sound quite the same as I did 16 years ago, but I'm not that far off either. And, uh, and I'm getting old, so maybe, you know, I'm, I'm <laughs> I'll just say it, I'm 41 years old, and I'm still playing teenagers. <laughs> so there's that. Thank you, by the way. That's very kind of you. Um, yes? Well, what, what instrument do you practice on the most? The most? Uh, the most is probably guitar. I've been playing guitar the longest. Acoustic? Yeah, usually. Uh, I mean, of course, I can play electric because they're the same thing, but I prefer the sound of acoustic. Um, I also play bass, piano, mandolin, banjo, harmonica, got a tin whistle, that's fun. Um, I've got a violin that I'm not very good at, but I'm working on it. I just love music. I really love playing music. Back here. Oh my. Um, I have, I, I did once, for a friend who was putting on a, a small convention in Utah, I did once cosplay as Kyo. Uh, that's the last time that will ever happen. <laughs> but I did. I had like green cargo pants and a, like a black shirt and a bracelet. And I didn't have a beard back then. But uh, I don't know. I think it would be cool to cosplay as, as Victor, but I don't have the body for it. <laughs> Um, did you have a question? Might as well. I feel like I've skipped you a couple oh, of times. No. Oh, not you. Behind you. <laughs> so, if you had a voice any character in the anime, what would it be? Oh, um, one that I said recently that I really, it kind of surprised me when I said it, but it's true. Uh, even though I think he did a wonderful job in the part, uh, I, I really would have liked to, to at least given a shot to playing uh, Rin in uh, Free. I think that would have been fun. I know, I know, I know, I know. But I think that would have been fun. I think that, you know, just want a shot at it. No, I like a redub. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what is your favorite video game? I don't play video games. Aww. I know. You know why? I would rather accomplish things. <laughs> um, I, I, here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, I have this discussion with my... I have a 17-year-old son, and we have this discussion on a regular basis. Playing video games is great, and I get it. I get it. It gives you that quick, that quick reward of... Yeah, made it through the level, or yeah, beat that guy. 
uh, and you can spend hours and hours and hours and hours playing video games. Here's the thing. If I spend that long on an instrument, I've learned a song or two or three. Uh, and, I, and I can keep that with me, and I can build on it, and I can improve on it. But it's something that I have at that point. It's not something that I'm saving in some, <laughs> some, some space that doesn't really exist, so I can go back to it and waste more hours on it later. Not saying that it's all a waste. Like I said, I get it. Um, it has its own rewards, but I would just say be conscious of the amount of time you spend doing it because you're never going to get it back. Yeah. And, and to be honest, you're not going to have anything to show for it either. So enjoy your time and do whatever you want. Absolutely. This is America. Play your video games all day and night if you want to. But don't be surprised when one day you're outside looking for an outlet that's free because you don't have a house to live in while you're playing your game. Yeah. Uh, just, just be conscious of it. That's all I'm saying. That's real. That's real. Yeah. Um, yes. Have you had, uh, while you're playing your instruments, have you had a string pop on you yet? Um, I, I haven't had a string break on me in years, but yes, when I started playing, I had them break off, pop me in the face, all that good stuff. Uh, yes, I've, I've had a number of strings <laughs> injure me slightly. I've had the E string pop out me. It's almost always the E string. It, wait, the low one or the high one? The, the very high one. Yeah, that's, it's usually the She e plays string. violin, so... Me, I'm trying to do that too. I had to correct myself. I was going to say, I do that too, but I'm not very good. Um, like I said, I'm improving, but it takes time. And uh, behind her, you had a question? Did, um, did having um, voice uh, Russia from Italia help you get the Russian accent? <laughs> That's a good story. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, again, I hate to dash your dreams or any ideas you may have had of how I became Victor, uh, but I'm gonna, because it's a good story. Before we start uh, the broadcast of, we have a meeting of the directors, and we all discuss who, are you, who do you want to use, who do you want to use, who do you want to use, because we're all going to be using the same actors. And we don't want to overtax one actor or, or saturate the market too much with one actor. Um, and we want to make sure everybody's got the time they need to do what they need to do with the people they want to cast. So we're having a meeting and everyone kind of discussed who they wanted. Sonny was at the meeting, but he, I don't think he had his cast lined out yet. Uh, I think it's because he had like he had just barely seen the first episode at, at that particular time, and so he comes over. And I will have to preface it with this: Chris Bevins is standing right beside him, and Sonny comes up after the meeting and goes, "Hey, do you have a Russian accent?" And Chris Bevins goes, "He's Russia in Italia." <laughs> <laughs> and Sonny goes, "Oh." Okay, and that's the last I heard about it. <laughs> and then about a week later, I get an email from Tara that says, hey, can you record with Sonny from such and such time to such and such time? And I was like, sure. And I get there and he's like, all right, you're this guy. He's Russian. <laughs> I see what you did there, Sonny. It's, it's nice. Uh, but so, so in, that, in that respect, yes, it did help me get the part of Victor. Um, Well, and, and let's be honest, they're, they're really the same voice. <laughs> they are. Uh, they, one, because they're both me, and there's only so different I'm going to be able to sound. Uh, generally, Russia is a little bit higher, a little bit creepier. <laughs> and, and Victor is normal range for me, and way less creepy. <laughs> That's the distinction for me, in my brain. I just go, oh, I talk like normal person most of the time. Occasionally with some comedy. Or, I talk like less normal person. <laughs> but almost always have a smile on my face. 
that's really it. There's, it's not a huge difference. I don't mind. I, most of my voices sound the same. <laughs> it's a matter of character, right? right? It's a matter of, are you fitting the character? Who cares what you sound like? Yes? Okay, so this is my total fan girl question. <laughs> um, now, I'm a big fan of Detective Conan, for sure. And um, I would like to know if there was any of the cases that you would want to solve in real life, which one would you do? Um, I don't know that I would really <laughs> want to solve any cases like that in real life. I did, I did play the game, though, when we were there. Uh, most of the cases, I kind of knew what was going to happen before it did. Right. Um, but then again, after you've watched enough mm -hmm. Detective Conan, you start to go, ah, oh, I bet it was the rope again. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, oh, here comes the fishing line. Yeah. Uh, you just kind of learn after a while, because they, they, they do, well, they do the same thing that, uh, which is very smart of them, they do the same thing that, that say, uh, Disney does or Marvel does with that show. They stick to the formula uh, and they don't deviate. You know why? The formula works. So they just do that all the time. You could, one could say every episode of Detective Conan is the same episode. Uh, yeah, it's got, a, it's got a slightly different villain, um, a slightly different means by which they committed the crime, and, a, and maybe one of the five to ten ways that he's going to figure it out. Um, but it works for him, so... Now, I, I, I hate to do this again, this is another part to that. Um, now, do you feel like there's a difference between when you're doing Jimmy and then when you have to be Kaito Kid, or...? Um, do you feel like they're the same? I, I only I only heard my, what I sounded like doing that once, okay. uh, and that's because after I heard it, I was like, that's an embarrassment. I should never listen to that. <laughs> I just want to forget about it. Because to me, it's not that different. Okay. Um, the, the only thing I ever did for Jimmy Kudo, um, I already have, uh, I don't have quite, I'm not Todd Habercorn nasally, <laughs> But I, but I, my voice generally sits somewhere between my throat and my nose. Those two things are involved. Right. For Jimmy Kudo, pretty much all I did was push it slightly further up in my nose. Mm -hmm. That's all I did. Yeah. Uh, so it'd be, why didn't I see it before? Yeah. Uh, whereas Kaito Kid, not that he ever said it, would be, why didn't I ever see it before? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Very slight difference. Very slight. Most people wouldn't even be able to pick up on it. Yeah. Uh, but that's what I sounded like to me when I heard it. And I was like, well, that's not, that sounds like the same person. <laughs> but Jap but in, in all fairness, uh, the Japanese, that guy didn't sound like anyone different either. He yeah. sounded like the same person too. Yeah. I, think, I think for Western audiences, they can get away with that more because we don't speak Japanese and we don't understand the differences that they might have done to make them sound different to the Japanese audience. Right. We hear it and we go, why do they all sound the same? This yeah. all sounds like three guys doing these 20 guys. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand. And sometimes it's because they had three guys do those 20 guys. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's yeah. just, the, just the way it goes. I, I directed a show called uh, Kantai Collection not that too long ago. Okay. And it's based on a video game, which is, I believe, why they did it like this. But the cast is like 40-something 40 40-something 40 female characters. And it was played by about seven women. And, and uh, I remember being so frustrated when I was watching the show initially. I was like, I don't know who to pick. I don't know who to cast for this. They all sound the same. Everybody sounds the same. I'm going to have to find 40-something different voices for this group of women that all sound the same. Well, then I looked up as much as I could about the cast of the show, and I was like, oh, well, that makes sense. It, they are the same people. It's, it's all the same women, the same small group of women. Well, I shouldn't feel so bad about it. It's perfectly fine. So I just cast whoever I needed to cast, and it worked out okay. Yes? Um, did you have any inkling at the time, and how do you feel afterward about the fact that Yuri on Ice blew up the way it did? Well, those who were in the know which was not me, uh, but, but people who keep up with it a lot more, like um, Micah's a good example. Uh, 
uh, Micah Solosad, who was who played Plasetsky, um, he he already knew. He was like Funimation doesn't know what they have, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and and that was always funny to me. He's like, you don't understand. This is this is big. This is huge. Um, because sometimes we get it wrong, and, and it's not just Funimation. Sometimes the, the whole Western audience gets it wrong. Um, and there will be some show that's huge in Japan, and then it comes over here and flops. Um, or vice versa. It flops in Japan, and it comes over here, and it's a big hit. It, it, it's really, it really depends so much on the, the <laughs> let's just say what it is, the fickle Western audience. Because... We're fickle. We have we have the ability to be, so we go, all right, we'll choose what we like and what we don't like, we'll get it out of here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, back there. Uh oh. Could you say Russia's line magic metal pipe of pain? <laughs> <laughs> it goes magic metal pipe of pain! <laughs> I believe Patrick Sides wrote that. Thank you, Patrick. Where are we? <laughs> yes, sir. Um, I'm just curious what you thought were the uh, the best voiceover actors like of all time, both men and women, the, the people who've done it, the, the gold standard. There's there's a lot of good ones. There's a very, lot of good very ones best out ever. there. I always think Robin Williams was the best ever. Um, Robin Williams was really good, uh, but I think Robin Williams was a good actor yeah. you know, period no matter no matter what he did now when you're talking about something like the genie or something like that uh, of course he was good they wanted a genie that was like Robin Williams um, and that's what he did years and years before he ever really got into the the acting itself not counting Mork and Mindy um, but you know he was he's a good actor he's a good performer I don't think it would have mattered what he had chosen. I think Robin Williams could have chosen to become a clown, and he would have been a great clown. Uh, he could have been a mime, and he would have been a great mime. Uh, he could, he probably could have been a great writer. Um, some people are just really, really talented. Yeah, I disagree with them with video games. Though. The, yeah. I, I just think it's, it, they haven't uh, come close to their potential. It would be something really cool about going to Australia and seeing like the great art, going into buildings and so on, and then yeah. blowing them up, you know? Sydney Opera House. Yeah. <laughs> See all the tigers and sharks. Um, more questions? More questions? Back here. You. Okay. Yes, you. How did you get into voice acting, and how did you get into voice acting in your director? Oh, boy. I'll try to keep this as short as I can. Uh, I did have an acting background. I, I did start taking classes back in junior high and whatnot. Of course, in grade school, you're gonna do little plays or little things like that. I was almost always chosen to be one of the goofballs in those things. Um, but, but I started taking speech, uh, and I got into choir, and then speech turned into oral communications one, two, and three, and then I went on to high school and it became drama one, two, and three. Uh, you get to direct your own play, and all of that stuff. I went to college and uh, thought I was going to do music, and I started out doing music, and then I realized, hey, I already know how to do all this stuff, I just didn't know what it was called. Um, and uh, spent a little while there, and then we moved all around, Justin Cook and I uh, went to high school together, and we were moving around basically playing music. Um, and we were in Tennessee at the time, and he got a call from his cousin, who we played with, you might recognize his last name, uh, a fellow by the name of Dismuk. And um, we, we were asked if we wanted to come to Texas and join a band. So we were like, sure, because <laughs> we were 20 something years old and had no responsibility whatsoever. It was great, uh, the greatest years. And so we wound up going to Texas, um, Played with this group for a while, practicing. Our drummer quit, so we had to find a new drummer. It turns out that our sound guy had a little brother who was a drummer. Um, Justin and I were just taking odd jobs or whatever jobs we could find because, again, we were 20-something and didn't care. Uh, 
So the drummer was a guy named Evan Jones. Evan Jones was the lead sound engineer at a place called Funimation in North Richland, Richland Hills, which is close to Fort Worth, and um, in the second floor of the bank building. So he was like, hey, I could probably get you a job up there being an ADR engineer for Justin. So Justin started working there as an ADR engineer, and I think he was, I think he was Sabbath's ADR engineer, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and uh, there were some actors out of town. I mean, he would bring stuff home and watch it and go, what do you think of this? Isn't this cool? And he was like, ah, oh, it seems like it'd be really fun. He calls me one weekend and says, hey, we need some parts recorded, and like everyone we tried to get a hold of isn't here, so you want to give a shot? It's like, yeah. But of course, he was aware of my background. He already knew that I had a background because we went to school together. Um, so there was a background, that's the important thing. I had an acting background before I ever wound up at Funimation. Um, so I went there, gave it a shot. Uh, I think it was, and then I went and auditioned for, um, I think it was Blue Gender. And uh, got to, that's where I met Sabbath the first time and he was very kind in, in my first couple of auditions. He's like, I think you can do this. Like, you can do this. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, kept going back for auditions, kept getting parts, and then it eventually got to the point where they would just cast me instead of auditioning. Um, because the whole time, everything until I started working for Funimation, which was five years ago, uh, everything that I have done was recorded between the hours of 6 o'clock at night and 10 o'clock at night. And that is because I had a full-time day job. So it was go to my full-time day job, drive an hour to get to Funimation, 6 to 10 at Funimation, drive an hour back home, wake up and do it again the next day. And it's, uh, it's one of the examples I use even for my own kids that, hey, if you really, if you claim you want to do something, how badly do you want to do it? What are you willing to, to do to do it? And that's what I was willing to do. And it worked out pretty well for me, so far. <laughs> I hope it continues to in the future. But that's the, the abridged version as best as I can tell in the time we have. Yes? Sure. How sexy is Victor? He would probably win gold medal in that as well. <laughs> I would assume he does have tight little butt. Um, but uh, in all fairness, most ice skaters have tight little butts. Um, he's he's pretty darn sexy. Um, yes. Any kind of burrito, what kind would you be? <laughs> I could be any kind of burrito. That's a good one. Burrito. Um, <laughs> kangaroo and uh, whatever that plant is that smells like a rotting corpse. <laughs> it's a silly question, it's a silly answer. And cheese. I mean, you got the cheese, obviously. It's not very ridiculous. Um, yes? If you took all the characters you voiced and made them, like, fight each other, who do you think would win? <laughs> um, probably Claire Stanfield. Because he's pretty awesome. <laughs> and, uh, like, I don't know, maybe Barry the Chopper would be a close <laughs> second. But I think Claire's a little smarter and faster than Barry. Um, I'm going to stick with Claire. Are we done? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Um, we only booked in 10 minutes before the time posted, so it's supposed to be at 20 All the fun we're having. <laughs> um, Yes, we need to let other people do this. So, I will take this opportunity to thank you all for coming. It was very fun. I enjoyed your questions. Uh,